Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to TGCon Live 2020. Thank you so much for being here with us today uh, to join us for our Solution Spotlight webinar on supplier compliance from Trace Gains. My name is Matthew Passananti, and I'll begin today's session by providing you with an overview of the product. Following the presentation, I'll turn it over to our sales operations manager, Ruben Galbraith, who will guide us through a product demonstration. And finally, we'll open up the last 15 minutes of the webinar for a question and answer session. Now, if you have a question or you think of one during the presentation or demo, please let us know by typing it into the chat box and we'll be happy to answer it for you at that time. Again, thank you so much for being here with us. I'm ready, you're ready, let's go. We established supplier compliance to help solve common challenges our customers were facing in evaluating supplier and inventory risk. So here are some of the most common challenges our customers were facing in the market today. First, suppliers are increasingly scattered across the globe, so communication and collaboration isn't always easy, especially when there's a problem with the materials that show up on your dock. Next, when an acquired action is missed or key data isn't entered properly, it can lead to major downstream problems. Sometimes variability in the materials can lead to quality problems, compliance or regulatory issues, and even process inconsistencies. Now, I don't know a company out there that likes the idea of manually reading every certificate of analysis and comparing it to the proper specification. It's simply an impossible task. COAs come in a multitude of different formats and sometimes arrive even after the shipment's been received. In these cases, problem detection and early warning just don't happen. And in the worst of cases, some item problems are detected only after the container is open in the plant floor. And finally, supplier corrective action requests are usually managed in a separate silo. And this means that integrating customer complaints, recouping lost dollars, and ensuring nothing falls through the cracks remains a big struggle. So if you're with us today, you may be experiencing one or more of these problems. Today, we'll highlight some of the most beneficial features of supplier compliance from Trace Gains. We'll begin by explaining how supplier compliance allows food, supplements, and CPG companies to evaluate lots from purchase order to production and extend your inventory visibility all the way to the shipping dock. Users can score card suppliers based upon critical attributes such as continuous compliance with ingredient specifications and more. Supplier compliance provides increased visibility on the overall daily lot-by-lot -lot quality of materials that are coming into your receiving dock on a regular basis. And there's a tremendous value here to quality, to plan operations and procurement, to be able to pinpoint problems before they get into your manufacturing process. You know, we're taking all of the attributes that you commonly collect for every lot of material coming in the door and we're bringing them together and automating processes and actions based upon information that you're collecting. We start by reading uh, certificates of analysis, we can collect receiving information and lab results, which will allow us to compare a certificate's claim to see whether or not the materials are within a spec. And this leads to better inventory control. Supplier compliance operates as a virtual early, early warning system, automatically identifying issues with incoming shipments even before they enter production and reducing out of spec inventory. We can also record the ingredient problems, complaints, and other issues that happen even after you bring material into inventory or allocate it in your production manufacturing process. We can check to see if a COA is in or out of specification. Is there a receiving problem? Can we flag and notify an internal and external resource when a problem occurs? Sometimes a problem may impact multiple plants. If that same material lot went two or three locations throughout an organization, Having transparency to this information and being able to instantaneously provide that can actually stop bad product from being manufactured in another location. Supplier compliance from Trace Gains, it provides the ability to scorecard suppliers based on critical attributes. With supplier compliance, you can investigate supplier productivity. We can ask questions like, who is the best or worst supplier of ingredient X? in terms of on-time deliveries or latent deliveries. If you wanted to do this manually, you'd have to contact your facility, ask them to go through the paper records, pull them into a file, put them into a spreadsheet, and send them to you. Then you'd need to have to review them 
allocate them, and do all the analysis yourself. It would literally take you weeks of time to answer this one burning question. Most companies want to ask this question, but don't. And the reason is that they know they won't get an answer. With supplier compliance and trace gains, the data exists in the system and is available to you at the push of a button. The benefit here is that you get to find out new information about your suppliers that you would never know before. There are a lot of unanswered questions that right now are costing your company a lot of money. So if you're sitting here today and thinking to yourself, yep, there's a lot of questions I have, then supplier compliance is for you. If, however, you're also sitting here saying, what questions? Then supplier compliance is also for you. If a function, from a functional perspective, supplier scorecards can be automated. The system takes user-defined templates and generates supplier scorecards. It combines scores from global supplier documents and historical lot compliance to produce an individual supplier scorecard result. All of this compliance data is centralized and allows your users to review specifications, track COA trends, and run reports on any critical data with a click of a button. A lot of companies don't have an adequate vendor management system to meet requirements and comply with FISMA and GFSI. So the ability to manage so many vendors and ingredients cannot be adequately handled by paper and pen. In looking for a solution, you need something comprehensive and configurable. Supplier compliance sits on top of Trace Gains Network and provides a complete but elegant solution to all of these problems. It is important to take this opportunity from a business perspective to figure out where risk and non-conformance is coming from. If we collect data from each and every lot over time, we can generate trend analysis, we can scorecard suppliers, use various attributes that we want to weigh, we can look at material trends and variation over time, we can smooth out non-conformances and variations from lot to lot that you're receiving from your suppliers on a regular basis. The value in your supplier compliance is not just making sure you're buying materials from an approved supplier, but that you're actually getting high quality materials that you can measure those on a regular basis. When it comes to inventory, you wanna do everything you can to protect your quality and the quantity of what you're storing in your warehouses. You wanna protect the things that you're bringing directly to the dock onto your shop floor in a just-in-time environment. When you uncover problems such as foreign materials that can cause an immediate recall, it is important to get the information in real time and communicate it immediately and accurately throughout the organization and to your customers. With supplier compliance, tracking important attributes such as moisture and allergies is extremely helpful to R&D and quality assurance. This information is directly tied into the ingredient specifications, so it makes it easy for them to keep track of ingredients, not only that you have, but that you're getting. Allergens are also a big issue to manage, so it makes it easy for them to keep track of the ingredients, not only that you have, but that you are getting. Allergens also they're a big issue to manage without mistakes. You can see your allergens identified, what products contain them, what ingredients contain them in your inventory, and what vendors supply them, or what vendors are handling them, and how they're handling them in their own plants. You can understand what ingredients are being used and in what products, if they have to formulate or change a product due to an inconsistency, in inventory or a shipment, they can do so digitally and immediately. We can manage vendors better and work with them to reduce risk if we have the right data to assess risk. You need to know your vendors, what ingredients they're handling, the processes they're using. You need to know the info to help you create a viable and continual risk assessment. What we're talking about is the documentation, yes, and the management of that data within to power an early warning system that will safeguard your products from a myriad of quality issues. Some companies have over 20 documents required per vendor. Multiply that by over a thousand vendors, and that's a lot of work. That effort, take that and multiply it by the number of ingredients per vendor, and now the process has instantly become unmanageable. Having a process in place that keeps track of the appropriate documents automatically notifies the vendor when a document is expiring and when to replace it is a huge benefit. Speaking of real-time notifications, that also, it's also a cornerstone of supplier compliance. Automatic notifications are kicked off whenever a non-conformance is detected by the system for both internal and external stakeholders. And customized workflow ensures the right people review each car and the car has been sent to the right supplier. 
Too often, big issues such as contamination occur, and too often downstream communication isn't always the greatest. If someone receives a lot for a product and they discover that it's contaminated, they can immediately put that product on hold, not only in their facilities, but across all facilities. Automated alerts are immediately routed to the correct individuals, and it is locked out so they can't receive it. And that's a huge advantage, not only for your plants, but also for your contract manufacturer's plants as well. And you'll see many more examples of this powerful system in Ruben's product demonstration here in a moment. And when I say powerful, I mean granular. You can send in COAs to the system and they'll process them automatically. There may be some issues with receiving and we'll generate a supplier corrective action to back that out to the supplier. The supplier sends a certificate of authenticity to the customer. The system will use optical character recognition to find information in a PDF file, to bring information into the system and process it accordingly. We'll pick up ingredient attributes, but also provide verification on other things that someone on a receiving doc might not pick up all the time. For instance, the system cross-references data that most people wouldn't pick up on. For example, the location that the material came from. And is it a qualified location? Also, are we reviewing the manufacturing date? Supplier compliance has such a robust alerting system, you'll even get an email alert of fine-grained details that might be causing a COA to be rejected from the system that might you might not even see. Any and all issues can be flagged with real-time alerts from supplier compliance. And when a FISMA or GFSI inspector comes into the plant and asks how to see, hey, how are you managing your vendors? It's going to be very easy to print a report and demonstrate that the documentation is available, it's up-to-date, accurate, and complete. Supplier compliance also provides historical perspectives to help ensure you're selecting the right suppliers. Oftentimes there may be suppliers you've worked with to improve upon a specific quality issue. That issue can be tracked, analyzing historical performance over time. If there are any issues, you can uncover problems faster, analyze performance, track it, and ensure compliance. And if it doesn't improve, the system will provide you with the data to decide that maybe it might be an appropriate time to look for an alternative supplier. The other benefit here is of aggregated data across the organization. It may not be obvious because complaints and issues may be spread across regions or plants. You may not be able to find issues with suppliers because you get one or more complaints per plant. However, when you aggregate data across plants, you get a larger view and could uncover 30, 40, or 50 complaints per this given vendor. Then you can easily say, this is an issue and it costs us money and we need to fix it. So in today's presentation, you've learned how supplier compliance provides comprehensive visibility so businesses can connect downstream issues, such as customer complaints and plant floor problems to specific plier lot shipments. They can respond by enabling supplier chargebacks, scorecarding, and rapid replacement of material shipments as well. At this point, I'll bring in Ruben to lead our product demonstration. You'll learn how to track issues and complaints across receiving quality in the plant floor. You'll see how Issue, how to issue corrective action requests and supplier corrective action requests quickly and easily directly from the system. Ruben will show you how the system can record and track the costs incurred by supplier ingredient non-conformance, enabling chargebacks to the supplier for loss recovery. You'll see how to scorecard supplier performance based on key attributes like specification compliance, cars and scars, and all of these processes are automated by customized workflow to ensure the right people get the right information at the right time. So Ruben, are you there, buddy? And can you take it from here? All right, thank you, Matthew. So today we're going to be giving a tour of our supplier compliance module, which helps you track batches of ingredients or perhaps even finished items from your co-manufacturers as they arrive at your facility. So what's part of this process? What am I going to walk you through today? We're going to look at how you can take an incoming COA and have trace gains automatically scan it, compare the values against your specification, perhaps even alerting you of issues. From there, we're going to go through a few more steps. What happens at receiving? What happens when our quality team needs to do some testing? And of course, what happens when issues arise? But let's get started at the very beginning stage, which for us is an incoming COA. So here I have a little bit of an email queued up from myself playing the role of a supplier called Xena Foods. And I'm going to be emailing into the system, even in advance of me sending a shipment of this ingredient out, a COA for Quercetin. 
So what does the COA look like? I'll pull up a little mock one here. So what it has, this should be pretty familiar, is some identifying characteristics. What company is sending it? Azena. What's the lot ID? What do they call their ingredient? What's the name? But of course, the vast majority of it is a set of different values, sometimes numerical, sometimes text, that speak to the characteristics of this ingredient, or perhaps the ways it was tested. So what's pesky about this process? It's taking this COA, maybe the 15, 20, 50 different values on it, and comparing it against your specification. A lot of lining up of different rows trying to make things match, and often this happens once the shipment has actually arrived, meaning that you're not catching issues early. So let's see what Trace Gains does to help you out on this. So I actually did a little bit in advance. I already sent in that COA so our system could get churning along with it. And let's jump over into the actual product here. So here we are as a mock company called uh, SMC Butterhouse. And what we're going to be looking through are the five tabs off here to the right, which encompass the supplier compliance module. A good place to start is on the COA monitor tab, where we can track an individual batch for a few different stages. The stages really being the receiving of the COA, the comparison as I spoke to. The receiving, so what happens at the dock? Did the shipment look right? Was the truck refrigerated properly, let's say? And then last, what testing may occur? So I'm going to tap refresh here. And at the very top row now of this page, we should have that brand new entry coming in for quercetin. I'm even going to filter this page to make it a little easier to see. So immediately, something should jump out at you. We have all these red things saying, we're maybe going to reject the shipment. It's out of spec. If I hover over this, we start to get some details of what's going on in the background. Apparently, the spec uh, said E. coli positive, an unlikely thing to actually go on a COA. It says the lead values, uh, parts per million, were above a certain threshold. And they used an extraction solvent type that raised a, a yellow flag type warning. Maybe something we're not familiar with, weren't expecting to see. So how did the system know this? Let me do a little bit of what's going on in the background before we keep chugging along forward in the demo. So what our system does is it uses optical character recognition, OCR, to read in um, COAs coming from your suppliers. Here's the interface where you actually can set that up. You're training the system here to recognize every time a Xena sends you a COA, this is where they put the lot number. And this row is where they put the aerobic plate count, arsenic values that they tested for, E. coli, et cetera, et cetera. So you train the system so that to automatically pluck these values out. And then these values are compared against what we call business rules. Here I have pulled up the business rule for the allowable aerobic plate count in colony forming units per gram for quercetin. This little table here, we won't get into the details, but you can tell how it's ranges of values. If the COA has something in this numerical range, accept it. If it's just outside of the range, raise a warning. If it's way outside of the range, call it out of spec, kick off an email, make the background color on that be red as we just saw. Now a quick little interlude, I imagine people were starting to wonder, what the heck is quercetin? I've seen it on a label of my food product, I've seen it in a dietary supplement, what is that? Consider this the little side education of the day. Quercetin is a plant flavanol from the flavonoid group of polyphenols. So I hope that's helpful for you. There's a little molecular diagram. But let it be known, it's something found in a whole lot of different vegetables, leaves, seeds, and grains. Probably the most common source of it, to my understanding, is actually kale. And as the little header here says, it's a bitter flavor used in quite a few different types of products. Uh, if you want to look this up later, head over to Wikipedia. There's a whole lot more information on quercetin. But let's jump back into our little demonstration flow here. So here we are on this page where we're kind of tracking this batch from this supplier, from this very specific site, this exact lot ID. But let's start getting into these other tabs and start investigating a bit further. So I go over to the COAs tab here, and I can see every single COA that's come in. We have them sorted backwards by time. Again, to keep things simple, let's go over to a particular dashboard I had built called Quercetin Overview. You can make as many of these as you want, maybe by supplier, by ingredient type, by different plant. But for our little example, we have a nice one narrowed down here. 
So here's the record. We still have that nice out of spec warning of what went wrong. And here we're seeing as actual columns, the exposed data of what was plucked off of that COA, something that happens nearly instantaneous in our system. If I clicked into the record here, I would see some more fervor details. We could see how they plucked off the item ID, the lot ID, all those bits and pieces off of what looked like a PDF. Below the fold in this little section called COA scanned attributes, I can see each value that came out, which ones fell within our allowable ranges, which ones were outside, like that E. coli positive, and which ones were a little bit worrisome, like this butane being an extraction solvent we hadn't heard of before. So this is all well and good. I was sitting in the product, I was hitting refresh, but that's really not how this is going to happen. What's far more likely is you're gonna to wanna to set up different workflows that alert staff about what's going on here in the background. And some of these workflows were actually running all the while. So if I come over to my inbox here, I see that a couple emails hit my trace gains notifications box. One of them was system generated. It just says, heads up, the COA arrived. We scanned it using the right template. Here's all the data. You probably want these to automatically go into your junk folder because you might have hundreds, if not thousands of these coming in every week, who knows, every month. What's far more useful is the second email that hit. This one says, trace gains notice the out of spec condition. So for this batch of quercetin, these three things were wrong. Do you want an instantaneous link that would jump you into that record? That's one use case, having your own internal team be alerted about a COA that doesn't seem up to code. Another scenario, a very common one, is having a simultaneous email go to this supplier at Xena Food Seattle saying, don't even dare send this out to us. We don't want any batches coming in that are E. coli positive. Right there, that can stop some of those dead ends that people run into when they realize that the ingredient isn't up to code weeks later down when it arrives, or maybe even months down the road when people start to use it to make an actual product. So big time savings potentially there. So what happens next? Let's follow this particular batch through various stages, pretending that we didn't full on reject it and tell the supplier to not send it. Let's just pretend this one's a little off base and we wanna go through the rest of the stages. So chronologically, what might happen next is that this shipment actually arrives, let's say two weeks later after the COA hits our system. The receiving team, which might have access to only just this tab within trace scans, so they log in and based off of their role, they don't see any of these bits and pieces, it's not relevant to them, but maybe they just see this receiving tab. They know a certain batch derived, it was for the ingredient quercetin, I see that on the label. They search for it and they see, all right, we were expecting this one to come through. And oh man, I see a little bit of a red flag situation. Apparently the COA was a bit off. Maybe I should take extra care unpacking this load. So what do they do? Their job at this stage is to fill out the receiving form. This could be as long or as short as you want. They could check as many things as they need. They could be looking at whether the truck was refrigerated properly, whether the driver was nice, whether he arrived on time. Or in this case, I'm gonna do, just do some of the basics. You know, when did this shipment arrive? How long did it take us to unpack it? Let's say about two hours right there. Maybe we wanna put in some details about when we received it, what we did. All these are configurable by the way, so don't get too wed to the options here. If you have five different things which can occur on an incoming shipment, we'd have those listed for you as we set up your version. In this case, because we saw some of those red flags, let's pretend they quarantined it. Let's say they picked out an inspection plan that was a high level plan. The moment they picked high, this extra little question came out saying, do you wanna put in some more details? I'm gonna say, we wanna do the full battery of tests. And because of that, I'm naturally gonna to wanna to pull a sample, put the ID in, and also say what time I pulled that sample. So I hit save here, and now the work of the receiving team is done. We can start to see kind of the whole history of this batch being built out. So I go back to the COA monitors tab, pretend I'm in that supervisor role. This is the tab I'm always peeking at. And I see now about the COA and I see what happened at receiving as well. So obviously there's one big section left. Our quality team needs to do some actual testing of this ingredient. How do they know they have to do testing? So what was the old way? 
probably the receiving folks would have to pick up the phone, send an email, yell over the cubicle wall, whatever it may be, saying, hey, QA, you need to get on this. That's not efficient. It wastes everyone's time. It's just a little bit of a hassle. So how do we do it in trace gains? This is a good spot to jump over to the workflows area to get a little bit more detail about how our automated workflows can kind of string you along for this process. So here I see some of those flows that already were occurring in the background. The notifying of the quality team that the COA was out of spec, potentially notifying the supplier as well. But here's a little workflow I want to show off for the moment called QA testing notification for a high alert. I click into this record here, and I know we're getting a bit into the details, but I find this pretty interesting. Here's how you build a workflow. We have this interface that says, all right, what area of the product of trace gains is this in? This relates to a COA. Uh, when do you want this workflow to kick off? Uh, anytime the record is updated, when receiving is done with it. What do you want to happen? We want to check to see if the inspection plan, that value has changed. And that the inspection plan now equals high. Remember how we toggled it over to high instead of low. What do we want to have happen when that occurs? We want to launch off some emails. Maybe we want to send off a really micro little email that you can adjust here on the spot. Maybe we want to send out a little bit more of a profiled email that uses a particular template. A lot of different options can come into play here. For example, you might even want to have a whole nother type of action where a data attribute is changed. Maybe you want to say, oh, since they said it was high alert, we want to set the testing procedure to 1.0 procedure, which means they will follow a certain set of steps. So this workflow has actually been running in the background here. And if we're lucky, if I go over to my email inbox, I can see how both of those notifications came through. Uh, the very simplistic version, check this out. And also the much more intensive one. Here's one that follows a template, tells you which supplier that we quarantined it, had the high inspection plan. And of course, it includes a link. We call this a one-click link, where that user could then come in, log in, and they will land on precisely the right page. In this case, what is that page? You can see here, now I'm within the QA tab, where they see a slightly different view of the information than anything else we've seen before. What I want to draw your attention to first is kind of the bottom half of it. We have this sort of left column, right column layout, where the left column is the data automatically captured off of the COA from earlier. And of course, I can't go back and edit it, fudge the facts afterwards. And the right column is a place where the QA team might be running their own tests and typing in their own results. Not always will there be a one-to-one -one correlation. Maybe you're not running every one of these tests. Maybe you're running a small battery. Maybe you're having an outside lab do it. But for demonstration's sake, it's nice to have these be lining up side by side. And here, this is a little bit of a silly example, but who knows, if you ran the same types of uh, heavy metal tests, maybe you ran them at a certain range. I know these don't really pluck out particular values. You're more so testing for, is it less than 10 parts per million? But what we can do is we can build in some intelligence to this form. So you'll notice this little field here that says, heavy metal check, did the QA testing line up exactly right? In this case, perfect alignment. But who knows, if I tested this and it failed even at 20 parts per million, if that was my testing result, I could have it say discrepancy found. So choose your own adventure on this of exactly what testing you want to do, what derived types of rules you want to have that show off the results in a handy format. But let's try to bring this example home here. You know, Let's pretend COA was off, receiving quarantined it, but let's pretend for the moment that testing went perfectly. We just did it this morning right here. Uh, let's go over to QA status. Let's say we are going to accept this load. We thought it was still fine, and we're going to hit save. That little bit of information kind of rounds out the set that was going on on the COA monitor tab. Now I can see, and I'll filter down again the page to see just quercetin, how it was out of spec, quarantine, but QA ran their tests, and everything turned out fine. This could trigger yet another email. Let's see if it hit my inbox yet. There it is. New lot has cleared. Uh, we did our automatic COA part. We did receiving and QA said it was all right. Do you want to go check out a page where we see all of our uh, 
incoming batches that did in fact um, pass QA testing. So you don't have to use these exact workflows, but think about those that are very common within your business, those steps that necessitate someone seeing information, telling someone else about it, having a historical record. That's what we're gonna wanna be replicating. Now, this case, things started to go wrong, but eventually went right. It's often the case where things continue to go wrong. How are you gonna remedy those situations? So at any of these different stages, the COA receiving QA, we could have raised a very particular flag up and say, you know what, things are going awry. I wanna kick off a corrective action. So I'm gonna briefly jump us over to that tab here and we could see what's going on on this page. I'm gonna na narrow it down even a little bit more. So instead of being on cars all, let's look at all the corrective actions, or in this case, supplier corrective actions, SCARs, that were around lot compliance. Here should be pretty evident that we have about 12, 13 different issues that are in different states over time. Probably the most interesting ones to look at would be something that's a closed out issue. So if you scan through this row here, we could see how it was raised because the COA was out of spec. It was this company and this lot. We went for different stages internally where we said, yes, we want to release this for internal approval. We want to ask the supplier to respond to us within 21 days of this date. We want to track whether or not the supplier logs in to our free system and gives us the information we need. <laughs> maybe saying we have a credit on this batch, maybe saying they have a plan to prevent this in the future. If I click into this record, it's yet again another very configurable view and trace scans where you can be tracking those steps in even a further level of detail than I just explained which people in your company are doing such and such, who released it for approval, what happened with the inventory, whether you filed it away, whether this potentially cost you money because you needed to do rework or go backwards in time. You could see what the supplier responded, whether or not they gave you the response back in the um, allowed amount of time. And then based off of their response, root cause, corrective actions, preventative measures, you can decide whether or not you're gonna close out this case saying you accept their response, or who knows, maybe you wanna go through another round of communication with them or have yet another person within your company sign off on this. So I said this whole module was kind of stuck within these five different tabs, but of course, everything within trace gains is interconnected. The data you're collecting through this supplier compliance module could roll up over into your analytics section. So for example here, if I go over to my supplier compliance dashboard, I could see this overall set of charts. What's going on with all these COAs? What's going on with a particular ingredient and its moisture level over time for various batches? Literally any of the data that we're collecting in that standardized digitized way could be exposed in this area. Or geez, to take it even a further step, if you wanna kinda of track your suppliers and be scorecarding them, you could have a view that not only looks at whether you've collected up their documents, their hacks at plans and all that jazz, but you could have a column that says which people have had uh, corrective actions based off of their individual batches of ingredients. This information, as you start to stack together our different modules, gives you a really holistic picture of what's going on with your supply chain, who your best folks are, who your worst folks are. And of course, with those worst folks, maybe you want to just start resourcing via Market Hub. So I'm going to wrap our demo right there and pull us back to our overall page here on trace scans, and we can move on to uh, the next stage here. So back your way, Matthew. All right, again, as more and more people are getting logged in here, we're just going to give this another minute. I know a lot of people are wrapping up with that, that main session. Uh, a few questions were collected there. Uh, we're going to answer those questions and uh, whatever other questions can get thrown our way. Uh, so uh, I'll uh, just do a quick introduction to buy us some time here as people are getting logged in. Uh, I am Jason Mueller. I work with Trace Games. Uh, I am one of the, the sales engineers. So uh, our job is to, to be the best around at understanding uh, how the product works. Uh, sounds like we're, uh, I'm, I'm not muted. So if uh, I'm being told people can't hear me, David, why don't you try chatting and see if people can hear you? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Um, so my name is Dave, or Davo for short, you know, one of three Davids in the office. I have to distinguish myself somehow. 
Uh, Jason and I work together on the sales operations team with Ruben. Uh, I'm the director of the sales operations group, although not necessarily the most knowledgeable. So uh, that's why I've got Jason here providing technical support. Um, we'll see if there's any other chat coming through uh, uh, about any audio issues or volume issues, but uh, I'm hearing Jason just fine, so I'm hoping you're hearing both of us. All right, well, why don't I uh, start throwing some of the questions your way and uh, I'll let you get started with these and uh, I'll chime in as needed. Uh, but uh, one of the questions, uh, oh, got to thank you, uh, Jenny, letting us know you can hear us. Uh, one of the questions that did come up and it got responded to in the, the chat, but I wanted to add some more uh, flavor to it is, uh, you know, can you collect the zone COAs uh, using formats other than uh, PDF? Uh, and uh, so I thought we'd just kind of clarify a little bit what rules are in place to, to be able to do that. Um, you know, the response, as you probably saw, is yes. You know, we can bring uh, in a number of uh, file extensions. But uh, the caveat that we usually share is that you want to be mindful that we're talking about a computer system that is scanning a document and needing to be able to read it. Uh, and so it's less about what is the format that you're bringing it in as, and it's more about well, is it a PDF of a document that's been handwritten or faxed? Uh, obviously, a computer's gonna have a, a much harder time uh, being able to, to pull the, the language off of those documents and bring it in. Uh, and so uh, you just wanna basically worry less about the document and more about is it something that is uh, legible, specifically computer legible. Yeah, and a, a big component of that obviously is just the, the consistency of what that looks like over time. So, you know, again, like Jason said, less about the format, but it's really, is the information in the same place, in the same format on a consistent basis? That's really the backbone of letting the computer being able to analyze it. Uh, now, another question that came up and uh, we'll tackle this specifically, but we can talk about this from a broader standpoint as well as somebody wanted to know is one of the data points that we can collect at receiving has the lot come in on time and can we scorecard off of that? And the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, so, you know, there's really no limitation on what data points you can collect at receiving. What we're doing is looking typically at uh, what data are you currently collecting? What's on that checklist when you're bringing in that truck and, and unloading? We want to replicate and digitalize that data. There's also an opportunity, though, to sit there and say, okay, well, what data haven't we been capturing in the past that we want to include? Uh, you know, at the expense of getting a little technical here, uh, we can have, uh, we can bring in the data from the purchasing system that says, this is when we're expecting the bot to come into um, our dock. Uh, and then we can go ahead and have the receiving team input the, the time and, and data came in, and then we can compare those two and essentially create an on auto conformance and let you know, hey, this one, uh, based on what was put in by the receiving team, did not come in in time. We can even have the derive tell us how many days late it arrived. Uh, and then you can build a corrective action off of that. Uh, but you can also go ahead and build out a data point that says, well, you know, what percentage of the, uh, the trucks that came in, these lots that came in, uh, arrived on time. And that's something that we can push out to the scorecard. Uh, and, and, you know, that was another question that came up early on. You know, what else can we use in that scorecard? So uh, I have lots of opinions on this, but I'll, I like to hear multiple voices. So uh, Dave, I'll go ahead and, and let us know a little bit about best practices around scorecard. And I'll go ahead and maybe while you're talking, I'll, I'll pull up an example of an actual scorecard. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Yeah, so in addition to, you know, information like, is it an on-time delivery? Uh, when we're looking at scorecarding, you know, we're looking at performance. And so performance can be variability over time. Uh, you know, what were the trends of any particular values or attributes that are being analyzed? And are they, you know, saying consistent, going up or down over time? Uh, we can look at, you know, things like that variability, um, you know, the on-time delivery that Jason mentioned, uh, but then you can start getting a little bit more granular. You know, what is the percentage of COAs that are uh, arriving and being in spec versus out of spec? Uh, have you had a, a rise or a drop off in that out of spec performance, for example, from a particular supplier or a particular product? Uh, you know, in scorecarding, you could also then 
kind of have a roll up of that performance data across all of your COAs, across all of those items and tie it back to, you know, corrective uh, actions, for example. And I think Jason can show this on screen, you know, where are the, the, you know, the most cars being generated out of your COAs, out of those lots that are coming in. Uh, you can use that COA data to support that type of metric on your scorecard. So on the screen, I have what I use as an exemplar, and uh, this was built out by one of our clients working alongside of us. Uh, and in reality, the scorecard that you want, your scorecard, uh, you're able to, to view within the dashboards and the software, but uh, the power of, of Trace Games is the ability to then pull that data out for each of your individual suppliers, put it in a Word template and deliver that scorecard to them. And you help to develop, uh, develop that scorecard. So uh, there, there really isn't like a one format that everybody uses. Uh, but I like this one because it really shows you how far you can take this. They've separated it into different data groups. You have functional. So they're looking at the percentage of COAs that are in spec. They're looking at the percentage of corrective actions that have to be issued. Uh, and they're also looking at results from the supplier questionnaire. So they're combining both supplier compliance and supplier management metrics. You know, as we scroll down here, you're going to see they're also looking at uh, the, the percentage of receiving inspections that passed with no issues. They're looking at the supplier docs and making sure that they're completely 100% current on their docs. They're dipping into data that they've pulled off of some of the supplier uh, standard online forms, such as confirming that the, the supplier has a GFSI certification and so on. Uh, and all these metrics then have some math tied to them that are going to generate a score. Uh, and so that way the supplier receives this, you determine, hey, do you want this to go out annually? Do you need to, this to go out uh, quarterly? Uh, and they're able to, to see how they're performing and, and if they're meeting those particular expectations. Uh, let me go ahead here. I think uh, maybe we had a couple other questions that were being forwarded to me. Um, we can come back here. Uh, can it auto quarantine if a COA has not been received? You want to go ahead and tackle that one? Yeah, sure. Um, so assuming, uh, um, you know, that quarantine means, you know, flagging a particular lot or flagging a particular type of shipment to be uh, identified, held, and maybe set aside, if that's what, uh, you know, the definition of quarantine is coming in from the question, then yeah, absolutely. We can set up a workflow uh, or in your site, you know, based on business rules and the attributes around that particular COA for that lot, if there were, you um, particular thresholds that were exceeded or particular types of contaminants or um, things like that that were identified and reported on the COA, uh, a workflow could be set up to identify that. And it's basically an if then type action. So if some uh, you know, microbial or some testing uh, is you know, positive for a contaminant, then trigger a workflow that notifies someone on your particular team, notifies someone on you know, the receiving or quality, sets the status of that lot shipment and that COA to, you know, needs quarantine, uh, and that could all be identified and flagged automatically. Take that one step further. Someone asked, uh, can, can that notice uh, of the auto quarantine push out to their ERP system? Uh, always the ERP system. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, what we could do is actually use the data that is set uh, inside of trace gain. So for example, moving something from, you know, safe to receive to quarantined, that status could be updated by the workflow. And then your ERP system can actually look inside of trace gains or pull trace gains uh, on a continual basis and look for lots where the status equals quarantine. And the ERP can then use our API to identify those, find the record of the lot number, and then update the record inside of the ERP. So the ERP would talk to trace gains, look for those statuses, and then update the ERP records directly. Thanks. All right, so uh, I have one more question and we can go 10 minutes over if people wanna ask more questions, by all means do. Uh, you know, this last session of the day, so we allowed it to go a little over yesterday, why not today? Uh, someone had asked if uh, there was a way to toggle 
between the COA, QA, and receiving tab. So I wanted to address that. To do that, I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to share my screen again so you don't have to just look at our mugs. Uh, and so here's uh, supplier compliance software. Up top, you'll see the tabs for COA, QA, cars, and receiving. Uh, unfortunately, for me, I'm not aware of a, a way that I can specifically start here in the record for a, a COA and then have that take me directly to um, the relevant lot in QA. But what I do use is uh, I'm going to go ahead and use dashboards. Uh, and so I can be in the COAs tab here, uh, and I've organized my COAs in a number of different ways. So rather than just having the bulk of COAs, I might view the COAs for a specific item. I might be viewing the COAs for uh, a specific supplier that I work with. Uh, and again, these are just using filters. So you can determine uh, how you want to uh, group these these particular lots. Uh, and then when I you know move on to those other uh, tabs, whether it's QA or receiving, I tend to replicate those. So I have a dashboard that can show me everything that's happening for a particular supplier, everything that's happening for a particular uh, ingredient. And then I'm able to continue to filter down. So uh, it makes it a lot easier to, to find that that I'm working with. Uh, another thing that comes into play here is when you're managing these dashboards, you're building them out. Uh, I will typically have them filter uh, to sort by the newest first. Uh, and so that goes ahead and, you know, when I'm looking at the top of the page, when I go to receiving, when I go to QA, when I go to COAs, I'm going to see the ones that have come in more recently at the top. So it requires a little less searching on my part. Anything you would add there, Dave? Um? No, no, no. I think you've got it covered there. That's exactly how I would do it. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, before we wrap up, I'll just make sure that there's there's no other questions out there. Uh, I think we're doing good though. I see a, I see a thanks, and so uh, perhaps we'll we'll leave it at that. Uh, this will continue to to the video will continue to be up there if you need to revisit it. Uh, please, if you have not already, go visit the conversations in the TGCon Live uh, website. That'll allow you to to see. Uh, what questions have been asked. We've responded to some of those in there. You can add additional questions, but uh, I'm going to let everyone go enjoy the rest of their day. Thanks for checking out Supplier Compliance. And uh, please, at the same time tomorrow, uh, myself and my sales engineer colleagues will be here presenting uh, some additional modules. I know we're going to look at smart alerts and I think we might have a sneak peek at formula management as well tomorrow. Everyone have a great evening.